In this video, I'm going to give you the best settings for recording gameplay and any video in Streamlabs OBS, as well as a few awesome features that Streamlabs OBS has. Just before we get started, I just wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Streamlabs OBS, so thank you Streamlabs for sponsoring this video. Now, the first feature I want to cover is something called selective recording. This is essentially where you can live stream one thing and record another at the same time. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But once you open your Streamlabs OBS and you see your sources panel right here, um, I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, let's just pretend that this display capture is like my video game or whatever is on my screen. And then let's pretend I have, you know, the webcam uh, or the face cam up while I'm playing the game. So in this scenario, I will be playing um, a game we're gonna pretend and I want to obviously have my webcam and the game on the stream but I do not want to have my webcam in the recorded video so what we're going to do is click this button right here which is toggle selective recording so since I'm recording with Streamlabs I can't actually click it right now but I will put on the screen um, first what it looks like when you hover over that button um, and then uh, what it looks like when you have multiple uh, sources and then finally um, I'll give you the definition or show you what each of the three um, selections do do. Of course, one will show on both the stream and the recording. One just shows on the recording and one will just show on the stream. So just make sure you have those selected properly if you do want to use the selective recording feature. The next feature I want to show you is called Replay Buffer. You'll find this located down on the right and it does say Start Replay Buffer. It's kind of like a play, uh, play button with an arrow. And what this does is essentially clips um, from the previous 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 15 seconds. And you can set that time frame to anything you want in the settings. Some of you might even want it to be longer, like a minute or even two minutes. Now, if I click the start replay buffer, like I will right now, as you can see, it brings up a um, stop button and then a save replay button. Now, say, uh, since I just turned it on, I want to save these last few seconds. So what I'm gonna do is click save replay and this will save it in your video file saving location, which we'll get to later when I show you the best video settings. Then when you're simply done with the replay buffer feature, you can just click stop and it will just turn it off um, and it will no longer be saving clips actively, but you can turn it on again at any time. Now, if you're wondering what the benefit is to using this, we're gonna get into that right now with the next feature, which is known as the highlighter. Now the highlighter is located over here on the left hand part of the screen. It looks like a little, I don't know what that's card called. It's like used in movies, but anyways, you wanna click that. It will say highlighter when you hover over it and it says new, at least as of now. So you wanna click that and it will bring you to this screen here. Now, as you can see, we do have that one clip that I had saved, um, but we're, what you're gonna notice about this is it's essentially just um, a way to easily use those clips you just saved and edit them um, and then export them and share them wherever you want. But feel free to mess around with these transitions, the duration, you can even add background music. And then of course you can click preview and export. And then if you click uh, the actual clip, then I'll pause it so I'm not talking over myself. Um, you can actually just drag these and trim the clip. So that's also very nice. Now I just wanna cover one final feature of Streamlabs OBS before we get onto the video settings and audio settings, which will be coming up next. And this feature is called multi-track recording. Now all multi-track recording really is, is if you've ever used video editing software like Adobe Premiere, something like that, um, you'll notice you have different audio tracks. Now basically this allows you to separate your game audio from your microphone audio, which is probably gonna be the most common use for this feature. And that's actually really nice because what that allows you to do is then in post-production, when you're editing your video, you can separate um, the audio between your gameplay and your microphone volume. So if you need to bump your mic up and the gameplay down or vice versa, um, you can do that very easily and allows you a lot of freedom in editing. Turn on multi-track recording. You wanna come down to your settings right here click that and then you want to come up to output click that and then you want to go, go over to recording um, and then come down here to audio track now make sure you do have your output mode on advanced right here once you have your output mode on advanced under the recording tab you can come down here to audio track and you just want to select as many of these as you need on i only have one on right now because i usually all, put all my audio on just one track, but I think I might start separating this because this is a really useful feature and I have ran into problems editing in the past um, where I wish my audio was separated. But I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. I'm gonna show you how to actually um, pick which audio source goes on which track. All you'll need to do is come down to your audio mixer, which for me is on the bottom right. I think that's a pretty uh, standard place where it usually is by default. I'm gonna click this open advanced audio settings wheel right here. And then of course it brings up all of your audio sources now. What you want to be focused on over here is the tracks. Notice I have all my tracks on because I only record 
uh, my audio to one track. But what you can do is unselect these and say I want my desktop audio, which is like my game, to be on track one. So I will leave just track one enabled. And let's say I want my mic. Whoa, 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 time out, time out, guys. All right, my mistake, um, while trying to demonstrate this multi-track recording, I accidentally kind of turned my mic off. So let's try to redo this real quick. So we're gonna go ahead back to options and then output, and then over to the recording tab once again. Now this is where I messed up. Make sure you do have um, however many tracks you are trying to use on right here. As you can see, my one is kind of cut off, but I do have number two on now, which means it will work with two different tracks of recording. And of course, if you have more than two tracks, you can do three, four, five, or six, or turn all of them on. But anyways, that's where I messed up. Now to finish going over uh, how you actually set these audio tracks, you wanna go back to your open advanced audio settings above your mixer, click that. Um, then you'll see here on the right, your tracks. Um, now this is where I messed it up because I didn't have one and two on. Now that I do have tracks one and two enabled um, in the other menu, um, they'll actually you'll actually be able to hear me now. So that's great. But anyways, I'm not gonna mess with this right now because I might mess it up again. Um, but uh, just make sure you have your tracks enabled on that previous screen and then enable them uh, on whichever track you want them to actually be on here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cover the best video and audio settings that I have found and that I have used to record this video. So let's go ahead and I'll show you those. So again, you wanna open up your options and then the three tabs that we are gonna be looking at right now, uh, firstly is gonna be the video tab, then we're gonna be looking at output and then audio. Um, but first we're gonna look at video and this basically you just want your canvas resolution to be the resolution of your monitor. Most people, this is gonna be 1080 or 1920 by 1080. Um, your output scaled resolution for recording purposes, you're probably going to want to leave this on 1920 by 1080. Um, if you're streaming, you might need to bump that resolution down. But that's a whole other video, um, which I will link to. I'll put a card up right now if you do want to watch a video on how to stream in 1080 60. And then for the downscale filter, I turned it on Lanxos, which is like the highest option. I personally haven't noticed much of a difference between the downscale filters, so use whatever you want there. Um, FPS type, leave that on common. And then FPS value, especially with gaming, I'd put it on 60. If you're doing only real life, like vlog style videos, where you're just talking to a camera, you could just use 30, that's fine. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go to the output tab. Um, and then we're gonna click over to recording because that's what this video is about. Of course, make sure you do have your output mode on advanced right here. And then you can go ahead and follow along. Type standard recording path. This is basically where your videos are gonna save to. So. Uh, just make sure you know where this is so that you can easily find your videos after you record them and you don't lose them somewhere on your computer but you can always click browse and change that at any point in time make a special folder and it can really help organize your uh, videos recording format make sure you do change this to mp4 it's the best one most compatible with everything again the audio track thing make sure you have those enabled if you are doing multi-track recording um, for the recording encoder, make sure you use NVENC new if possible. Um, the other options just aren't really good. If you don't have NVENC new, hopefully you have at least NVENC, um, which is gonna be your older NVIDIA graphics cards. And I do believe that um, AMD cards have a separate thing that's not called NVENC, but it's probably called something. But your hardware encoder is gonna be the best encoder for recording and streaming videos. But after your encoder, you wanna come down to rate control. Now it's, this is where it's a different from live streaming where you would want to use CBR rate control. When recording a video, you want to be using VBR. Um, and then the bit rate I used to record at, which is pretty good quality, um, is 12,000 bit rate with a 16,000 max bit rate. I get very good quality uh, with this bit rate in both you know, videos like this as well as my gameplays. Very good, so I would recommend this as a starting point for your bitrate. I leave the keyframe interval on zero, preset, max quality, profile high, uh, look ahead is off, psycho visual tuning I leave on, and then I leave the GPU on zero, and the max B frames on two. And last but not least is the audio tab. Uh, not a whole lot here. This is basically where you can kind of uh, adjust your audio devices or pick certain ones um, if you do need to, but I personally don't use this tab too much, but just so you know, it is there. So that's gonna be it for this video. Again, thank you Streamlabs for sponsoring this video. We'll leave a link in the description if you do wanna check out Streamlabs Prime. They have a lot of great benefits to that membership program. So go ahead and click that link in the description, check it out. But that's it for today's video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.